Hello everybody and welcome to this RTS Q&A for Baptiste Series 2. I'm Rihanna Dillon and I am delighted to be joined tonight by writers and creators Jack and Henry Williams, Fiona Shaw who plays Ambassador Emma Chambers and Baptiste himself, Cheki Carillo. Welcome to you Hi, all. Good evening. Good evening Hello. everyone. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Harry, I want to start with you. How was it getting back into the rhythm of writing Baptiste? Uh, how was it going back into the rhythm? It's always a joy. You know, we love the character, we love the world of the show. I think, you know, this season was different from the last in that we reintroduced the kind of dual timeline element, uh, which is both exciting and uh, maddening because you have to try and piece together the two time frames and have them both be, be you know, be relevant and and earn their place so uh always a joy you know we love we love the character we love writing for that and uh yeah it's fantastic and jack what about, about you miserable miserable he was a nightmare he was an absolute nightmare i didn't want to do it he doesn't want to do anything these days he's a nightmare uh, but you know i've got to pay my mortgage somehow <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, it was very exciting. As Harry says, we love writing this character in this show. And um, I think once we, as we started breaking the story and realizing it was going to be the last one, that was both hugely exciting and sort of uh, painful at the same time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And Checky, you think that you've got the measure of a character after playing them for a while. Was there anything new or surprising that you learned about Baptiste this time around? Uh, I, I never thought he would be uh, so, uh, he would go so deep down, you know, I, I never thought he would, he would hit the bottom uh, of, uh, of the, of the barrel, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really surprised by it, but also I was really excited because uh, the, the timelines gave us uh, both uh, Fiona and I, we are a, a duet. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, it, they gave us uh, both the opportunity to uh, to really uh, 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 play in a wide range uh, uh, of emotion and uh, state. Mm -hmm. uh, so the body was really involved, and for uh, for us, I guess as uh, actors, it's uh, it's um, it's it's like a, a, it's a gift, you know, to be able to uh, to play with our instrument. Uh, give so much uh, possibilities to have them, uh, you know, sing. Yes. So it was exciting, and um, and for me uh, to meet um, uh, this amazing ambassador uh, uh, Fiona, and uh, I really enjoyed. The, I mean, I'm uh, I'm say, you you're there, so I'm I'm glad to be able to say it live. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it. I, I'm proud really proud to to have met you and uh, impressed you are a really uh, high profile uh, human <laughs> we're all fiona's number one fans here definitely fiona you have done so much in film and tv especially recently you kind of it feels like you're always on our screens and it's always a delight to see you what stood out about this script and the character of emma chambers in particular when it feels like you know you can probably walk onto any set. Why this one? It's simply one of the best scripts I have ever read. And I mean, without sounding like a love fest, it was a huge honor to work with Checky, who is one of the most passionate, uh, brave actors to act in a language that is not his first language mm -hmm. and to act such depth of passion. I knew it was going to be, I was terrified of meeting him because he's such a, <laughs> he looks so wonderful on, in, in everything. He's, in, he's always got this marvelous jaw, you know, and yes. he always looks so intense. <laughs> so I was very excited about working with him. And I thought Jack and Harry, they have an ability that I don't know where they get it, but the plotting is, as you know, you know, magical. But I also very much like the character because it's so ordinary. I like the ordinariness, you know, mm -hmm. I often play very, a peculiar person who comes into something. This was just a person. Where something extraordinary happens to her, I suppose. Yeah. I liked that. And, and I, I also love the dynamic that that somehow that Checky and I were not playing people in, romantically involved. That was so unusual. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still Even have though, so much. Uh, I, I think Baptiste sometimes maybe 
<laughs> you know, yes. You know, sometimes I'm thinking. I mean, uh, you know, fun, fun, uh, how do you say, phantasm, phantasm. Yeah. Everybody has phantasm. You know, it's true. So I won't tell you which one Baptiste was going through, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Just Harry, Harry, <laughs> Harry and Jack, tell us about visually separating those two timelines because you know Baptiste has got a beard and Emma is in a wheelchair. How else though did you film film those two timelines to show that we are in <laughs> sort of almost very different worlds? Pretty much, yeah. To be honest, I mean, <laughs> beard, wheelchair. Yeah, what are the yeah, I know, I'm, uh, the beard's the wheelchair. <laughs> beard and the wheelchair. <laughs> In that first episode, though, I was like, what's, what's happening? I had, you know, I was so kind of shocked and thrown. And then suddenly, you know, you're kind of disorientated initially. And then it takes you a second to get into those two timelines. I definitely think, you know, having done, you know, obviously both seasons are missing and Baptiste won, I think there were probably bigger differentiations there than there are here. And that was, that's part of the fun. I think people have been watching this show and this character for a while now, and people are sort of much more sophisticated. And I do think that confusion is, sometimes quite welcome because you're forced to go okay I don't know exactly where I am but you're going to tell me you're going to show mm. me you're not we're not afraid to go you don't I just hate shows when you're watching it and they repeat what's going on every five minutes in case you're bored because then you do get bored like trust people to stay with you and actually if you're confused trust that we'll take you on the journey with us or oh, watch something else which is or, or, or look at the beard the beard is pretty good the beard was epic the come beard, on where the beard <laughs> it was cultivated for many many months we wanted Fiona to have a beard, but she was. You know, I I, I I missed I missed the show too because I had the beard. You know, I was uh, offered this, something fantastic. I won't say, you know, I, you know, uh, but uh, because of the beard, and he was a good friend and I loved so much admiration for him. You know, uh, and I had to say, no, I'm sorry, my beard is growing. I need to keep my beard growing for the show. But your relationship, your beard was very good for your relationship, I think. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> your yeah. one smells good. The sacrifices that you make. It's a bit rough. <laughs> um, Fiona, tell us about the research that you had to do to play Emma Chambers. Well, I, I visited a few ambassadors. Uh, I That's visited, pretty cool. Pretty good. I spoke to the British ambassador to Hungary and uh, went to visit them in uh, in Budapest. And they lived in a gorgeous house up the hill in Buda. And I also went to the embassy. Uh, I also met the Danish ambassador to Hungary. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, that was very interesting. I, I mean, it was, it's very interesting because I think it's a much harder job, of course, being an ambassador because, and of course at this moment, particularly difficult because one minute they're making trade agreements with Europe and the next minute they're unpicking trade agreements with Europe. I, so I think the British, but that's not particularly dealt with with this, but you can see how hard they have to work at, mm -hmm. uh, and how tired they get. They get very tired. Oh, that was very significant for the show because I think it's important that, um, this character, you know, is somebody who has paid too, so much attention to work. She's perhaps not been the best parent. Mm. And Checky, Baptiste is kind of grieving. He's lost. What is he looking for? What's motivating him to carry on when we first see him? Well, the, well I mean, it's true. He's uh, in the moment he doesn't see a, a light in the tunnel, but... Uh, we know from the first episode that uh, to see uh, this woman uh, being so so lost and uh, going through this uh, terrible tragedy, uh, he feels uh, he identifies with her. So uh, he he decides just to go and see. Uh, well, I can help. I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. Let's try to see if I can. Uh, uh, find a way to um, to help her. So uh, that's that's uh, that's how he he goes on by doing what uh, he feels uh, uh, okay with. You know, I guess uh, if you are in 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 a moment of your life uh, where you don't see uh, any light, how how to do? You know, I mean, uh, jump out of the window. Well, maybe, but what, you know, so let's try to go uh, to build, you know, it's like the road, the, it's like a three points in a sentence, mm -hmm. you put three points in a sentence, but you know, you can continue writing and it's like the road, there is a, uh, an abyss, and then you build, 
build, build until you, until you eventually you, it's too late. Escape, yeah. <laughs> so he's trying to build a bit more road and uh, he's working. So when he's asked, what, what the hell are you doing here? I'm, I can help, I, I want to meet her. No, but you know, yes, yes, I will. And uh, he doesn't care about, uh, you know, I'm going straight talking to her. Mm -hmm. And eventually she will uh, accept because the guy is strange. And uh, he's, if he's able to explain her how uh, a queen bee can uh, find a way to, to get away from the new one coming and rebuild another real somewhere else, maybe this guy has some magic that can, uh, that can bring something. And this is the talent of uh, our friends here to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to give us uh, the, the magic. The magic is a yeah. great is a great way of describing it. Um, I want to talk about some of the new characters and Harry and Jack. How you consistently strike that balance of having recurring, much loved characters and also new faces. And how did you decide who to bring in? We see like the BAFTA nominated Conrad Khan, who is brilliant. It was lovely to see him in there. I mean, we're just lucky we get great actors to do it. But I suppose, yeah, I suppose just when you write these things to every, every time you write a character, they've got to be good because you've got to get, you know, when you get someone on for two scenes to do a job, good actors don't want to do it. They, they can tell if they're there to say what time, you know, they saw them leave for dinner and then, and then exit the scene. You know, good actors want to go, who am I? What am I doing here? And why am I interesting? And if so it's sort of a mutual thing, really. If we can't make the scene interesting and say to actor why it's worth playing, then they don't want to do it. And you end up with people who sort of wander on and wouldn't mutter some stuff and getting 80 yards yeah. uh, months there's, later. There's a lot of story as well. So you've got, <clears throat> you've got to cram all that story into that time and, you know, you only have so many characters populate it. Um, so you've got to, if you're going to have a character in it, they've kind of got to earn their place and they've got to be sort of dimensionalised and, and all that jazz. Um, so it's sort of, yeah, it's, it's, it's being led by the story fundamentally though, like a lemming. <laughs> How fluid are, is that kind of process? You know, like when you were in rehearsals, did you change or reassess anything from that or was everything sort of locked in from before? I'd say we change a lot. I, I, I think, um, not story-wise, I think story-wise are big decisions. Oh, that's oh. Cool. oh. Jack, you back? I'm back. back. I mean, Great. I think the internet was tired of my tedious answer, but <laughs> I um, wasn't. Keep going. <laughs> I think the story never fun fundamentally changes, but I do think we definitely watch all the rushes and talk to everyone as we go and try and adjust. And I think you know, hopefully, we didn't fiddle too much because it can be tempting to keep rewriting. But you see what works and what's great and what you're loving, and sometimes you go, "I want more of that." So we do write to the strength we're seeing, and we, you know, we talk to. Uh, Fiona and Jackie as we're going and before and just try and remain open to all our actors to go what are you what are you doing putting in what are you liking and what aren't you because you know it's only to, when you start doing it that you know what works and I think mm -hmm. to just suddenly I mean, just stick to it just because that's what you wrote months ago before you, you started doing it would be a mistake so yeah we, we try not to sort of endlessly fiddle but we do adjust quite a bit I'd say yeah it's things like, come up like from the script that you wouldn't immediately have recognized you know you think oh it's all there and then you'll watch it and suddenly something else will occur to you and you go maybe we should look at that again or maybe we should tweak that or you know adjust accordingly it's one of those things mm -hmm. and Fiona and Checky you have just seen the, the episode for the first time as well w what did you think how like how different was it to what you imagined while you were filming Fiona well, they have shifted some scenes around. So in your mind, though, though I have to say though, during the whole experience, I had one map with, with what happened 14 months earlier and then what happened on my wall. And then I had another one, what we were doing in every day. So it, it is a labyrinth of, of staying with the story. But I, I felt that, um, I mean, we just, we just, I loved watching it because I was, of course, it's a trip down memory lane. There's one scene at the end of the, um, of the episode where Checky and I meet in the rain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> I was going to die of cold. Um, it, you know, it was pouring with rain and it was freezing and we were in the best. And in between each take, we had to go and get washed. So, you know, those things also come in as you watch. But I was surprised at some of the switching of some of the um, timelines, but I think 
you know, as I'm sure Harry and Jack will say, that happens in the edit. They know, they suddenly know what will work better. In the, mm -hmm. in the I felt your cold in that scene. I just, I felt so... <laughs> <laughs> I was bruised. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad about that. <laughs> um, Jackie, what about you? You know, you're just sort of having to watch yourself in, in so many scenes. How is that watching it back? Um, <clears throat> as I said, um, I, I think it's exciting to see uh, those characters in uh, those two periods. It's really, um, it's, it's, uh, or, it's sensual. There is something really, uh, the flesh, you feel the flesh, you know, it smells the blood. And, uh, and, um, but uh, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I wish um, uh, I would, I, I guess we will have, uh, which is interesting, we will have through when the, the screening of the, the episodes will go on, people will start uh, uh, playing with the timelines. And uh, for, I, I guess for, for me, for us, I, I think it's not easy to, uh, to, to say what, how we get it because, you know, suddenly I, I'm, I, I need to look at it maybe a, a, a second time mm -hmm. to, to try to be, to be new, you know, and uh, uh, be a, away from uh, what I was doing because uh, I'm looking at it, but at the same time I see wh what I did Suddenly, I realized, ah, oh, fuck! They cut the the thing with the with the bees. Ah, oh, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> um, you know. But now I will look at it, and I'm curious to see how people um, will be uh, uh, roller coasted by the the um, you know the the how do you say the words? You see, uh, uh, help me, help me. <laughs> um, um, by, by the, the the yeah the the, the this uh, snake uh, the fiction you know by the snake mm -hmm. going like that you know mm -hmm. yeah episode one is, is, is it clear is it clear am yeah. i clear am I... I know exactly what you mean jack sorry okay. episode one has definitely <laughs> changed uh so it may be a surprise to these guys we've moved things <laughs> around a lot it was i think we must have done 20 odd different cuts oh of this one um to get it to get it because it, as, as they say there's so many different parts to it, the past and the present and where do you start and when you know when you put a certain scene you move it around and the whole meaning and surprise of it changes which is really interesting and I think it's trying to find that balance between intriguing confusion but also finding time to sort of empathize with the characters and sort of understand where they're coming from so hopefully yeah. we've ended up in the right place I think it ends up you know because it's it's really uh it's really uh it's witty there is something uh uh, uh, uh enjoy uh, enjoyable you know the way it plays uh those contradict i mean those timelines you know it's very uh, it's, it's very enjoyable mm. there is something um uh, witty is it the right word witty? yeah yeah it is very it's yeah. a very witty script i mean sparkling sparkling also. nothing less <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it i mean when you're writing for a multilingual show how does that impact on how you write because obviously different you know places will kind of speak in different you know they'll have different terms of phrases and everything how sort of easily does that come to you um the magic of google translate is our <laughs> please tell me that's not true uh it's not true <laughs> uh we write it all in english and have a translator but no i think in fairness in to, to the heart of your question um i think we do write slightly differently i think we definitely write differently for for Czechy, I think when we first wrote the character about Cheeks, we had a certain way of talking and then Czechy had the way of, and we sort of, the two have melt, merged. I don't think, you know, that lots of French people talk like Baptiste does. He's got a sort of French Yoda quality and it's it's become, the line between Baptiste and Czechy has become blurred and he's got his own very unique way of talking. And so we were trying to think like, it gives you a certain license for people to express themselves slightly differently. When it's written down, you can be maybe slightly more florid and poetic because it's a subtitle and it's got a sort of certain, you can have a bit more poetry sometimes. And I think when you're writing in English for English people, we tend to tend to be what we don't say mm -hmm. um, and writing between the lines. So that's maybe one way that we, we change things. And I mean, grief seems to suffuse so many of the characters. Fiona, how tough is it to play someone who has been through so much trauma is still going through so much trauma? Yes, I mean, you, you, you haven't got near episode four yet. <laughs> oh, I haven't. Oh, God. Um, I don't want Episode four hit the, you know, the letterbox that we think, what? <laughs> 
so there's plenty of grief to come, but I think it was, um, you know, Michael and Darcy always says the key to things is not to ever play the same beat twice. And I think it's a tribute to this writing that even though it's grief, it's, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's not just a thing with feathers, it's a thing with many, many facets and the way in which grief em emerges in people or, you know, I, it's fiction, so it has to move forward in time with grief, which most people actually just stun with grief and can't function. But these people find a way of functioning. So I found it very hard to do, very tiring, mm -hmm. but very rewarding because I was trying to be true to both the kind of grief that Cechi was playing and the kind of grief that Emma is displaying. They're, one is an ongoing, he's got sorrow actually, mm -hmm. he's got real sorrow because he's failed. And she, she, she also discovers her own failure. So it's as much about failure as it is about grief, I think. And Checky, obviously, Julian has evolved over the years, but, you know, who was he first shaped on at the very beginning? Did you have someone in mind for who you kind of wanted to draw inspiration from to play him? No, um, <clears throat> I knew he, he was inspired by uh, somebody... Uh, uh, they 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 know well. Uh, I guess uh, what we maybe we have in common is I, I'm French, and uh, and also uh, they <clears throat> he's a really uh, he's a, a really good um, uh, private. Um, but um, I was just following the the writing. I was trying to blend with uh, you know I was. Uh, Letting myself go, you know, uh, I, I blended with the, the thing. I blended with the people, you know. I tried to uh, uh, feel everyone and uh, and be as open and uh, and ready as as I could. Um, I um, I was really excited to play somebody bright like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt uh, well. I wish I would be like him. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, uh, I felt always it was like a, really, uh, for me, uh, as a Fiona, is, uh, as an actor, it's one of the best experience, you know, because uh, uh, they get, you know, they are not afraid. They have a lot of confidence in us, you know, they are not afraid to give us a, the, the season two of The Missing was an incredible mission, you know, it was amazing. I thought, wow, they really uh, have confidence. You know, he is. He got. You know, he was moving. He was um, he changed a lot. You know, um, but what I like uh, um, in in this one, what I I'd like to go to go through, it's like uh, uh, we discover this new country. You know, and uh, the the story is really bold, and uh, uh, they are not afraid to. Uh, every country we go through is a is a character, mm -hmm. and Hungary in that story. Is a really good, a really good character, and they are. Um, for us, it's very interesting. As um, Fiona said, she met the ambassador. You know, suddenly we we are uh, involved uh, in another culture. Uh, suddenly we are crossed uh, by different uh, um, attitudes, by a different kind of government. Uh, there, there is Europe here. We are. Are we in Europe in Hungary or or not? Yes, we are, but not. But yes, but not. No, but you know, so there is a lot of questioning and they are bold, uh, not afraid uh, to call a, a cat, a cat, you know. So um, it's, it, for, for me, it's, it's, um, it's super to, to have to, to deal with uh, all this. It's really nice. So now how it, it, it evolved, you know, he grew older, mm -hmm. he grew older, he grows older, uh, doesn't succeed to, uh, to feel uh, in the right way with his private life. Unfortunately, he's losing his daughter, um, you know, uh, but uh, he keeps being really good at what he does. Mm. He is not afraid to, uh, to, to go for it and uh, face the, the, the truth. Yeah, he's fearless. Um, he's, uh, is cool. Um, Harry, I just want to kind of pick up on what Cechi was saying about um, Budapest being a sort of character in its own right. Whenever we hear that, you sort of 
like you know with New York for example you know exactly which parts of New York you're going to see when it's being described as a character in the film with Budapest it was it kind of especially in the first episode it, you don't necessarily expect to see what we see so tell me about how you wanted to draw in those parts of Hungary that we wouldn't necessarily associate with you know Budapest um what do you mean in sort of the the areas we go to in Hungary it's or? not like the sort of touristy bits no, it's not, not the bits that we think oh that's recognizable yeah it's not the post picture postcard stuff I think that's not that's the sort of obvious version isn't it it's like couldn't afford that and that will come down to sort of again being led by the story and going where should this take place it's not 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 everything happens in the central sort of you know uh, picture post postcards part of part of the area so you're sort of led by locations and what looks beautiful and you know there's a lot of beautiful architecture there and a lot of great places and actually it starts out in the mountains so it's sort of even outside of Hungary for for the beginning part of it but yeah it's always being led by the story and then the locations follow follow from that mm -hmm. and I think what's important is certainly as you go into it more what becomes apparent is we couldn't have set this anywhere else mm. I think that's really important. I, I think if you feel like you could pick it up and sort of drop it anywhere, then it becomes disposable. It becomes just a tool you have at the scenery. So I definitely don't think it's immediately apparent in one why we chose Hungary, but I think it becomes increasingly apparent that as the series goes on, this story sort of had to exist there. So do we delve a little bit more into sort of Hungarian society and politics then as the series goes on? Without yeah, and cooking, mainly cooking. And cooking. Dumplings. Really um, no, yeah, it, yeah, definitely society, politics, the country, Europe, just its place in the world. What are we saying about the world today? Yeah, I mean, not, not in a heavy handed, it's not a political show or a heavy handed show, mm -hmm. but there, this story had to take place here. And it's important, again, that for someone like Emma, you know, this is, it's sort of her world and yet it's not. She's an ambassador, so she moves around a lot and she makes places her home, but they're not entirely her home. So she's sort of marooned a little bit by mm -hmm. the trappings of you know the power and her status and yet you take her family away and it's it is very isolating and you know who she got there because someone moves so much she's got her Nadine she's got her work colleague and that's mm -hmm. sort of yes he's her friend but there's something sort of almost more profoundly sad about that that in moving so many times the family was everything to her so again I think it's that's some, a story you couldn't have told if it was you know if you said it all in England. Mm. You've you've both got a background in writing for comedy as much as drama and with actors like these guys who are so great at being comic as well as fantastic dramatic actors. Are you keen to make sure there is always a bit of comedy in there, however dark the series gets? Certainly in this one, more than the others, uh, we definitely uh, had some moments where we've kind of pushed away just because they're so brilliant at it. And when they do do it, I think there's, it, it, there's a lot of quite intense, quite dark stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So it's such a relief when a little goes a very long way. Um, and uh, there is only a little there is a little <laughs> very, very little uh, they're both so good and when when, yeah. when when they do do it you go oh you sort of wish you could write it more but then the situations they're in and what they're going through it's very hard to find but mm -hmm. that's how he says probably more than any other I mean I I wouldn't deny that I think Missings 1 and 2 and Baptiste 1 were were hard going they weren't a giggle fest and this isn't a giggle fest either but it's got a little more light and shade. And I think there's a certain wryness and sort of stoicism that these characters give us that they can mm -hmm. approach. And particularly when you go to the other timeline, they can look at their own situation with a certain, dispassion isn't the right word, but a certain objectivity that lets them talk about it in slightly different ways. So no, I mean, you're not going to be chuckling uh, the way through this one, but uh, I'd say they go, these guys do it so well that there's a little more, but they'll probably be like, when? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, Fiona, do you think that good drama always needs an edge of humour as well? Yes, I think you get to know the person by the sense of humour that they have. Yeah, I think that you do. You get you get to know who they are, and I think. Um, I mean, sometimes you know, some of these scenes we were three days in the sa same scene, Jackie and I. So you, you do. You know, these huge scenes took place, so you do need to have humour that allows it to um, to breathe for them to breathe. Yeah. And coming to you. I, oh, sorry. I think on. you know. I, I think that. The, the the worst situation could, could be laughable. I always thought there is no tragedy, no comedy. I think life is a tragic comedy. You know, uh, uh, that's why. I mean, you, sometimes people will laugh without us wanting to. You know, it's like uh, we, we, if you are true to the situation, sometimes it's laughable 
without you realizing, you know, and suddenly I remember this is something that comes to my brain always when I'm with my father, he's dying and we are laughing and he's laughing and he's dying. And he looks at us and he's saying, look, we can still laugh, you know. Yeah. So um, th th there is something strange and the pain is there, but still we, we, we laugh. The same with my sister three years ago happened. She was so young and she died, 62. And uh, we, look, we, we were laughing at each other. She was looking at me and suddenly she, she started laughing at the pain she sees on my face. You know? So uh, it's strange sometimes, you know, it's strange how we deal with the worst situation, you know. Uh, when we start with uh, Fiona, look the way she enters the car, the way she uh, suddenly realized, do you think I'm out of my mind? This is, she's in the heat of the, 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 the thing. This uh, guy from the family helps her to, to, to do a mission and suddenly, you know, it's, it, is, it is a tragic comedy. You know, it starts with this uh, spark, you know, with this fire. So um, there is a comedy in the heat of the tragedy. Yeah, and how was it for you coming in, you know, when Checky, Harry, Jack have, you know, worked together for such a long time now and kind of coming into this family, what did you have in the forefront of your mind? Me? Well, they were very unwell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> they were really hostile and very unwell. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. they were. Unfriendly bunch. And yeah. um, I thought we were all thrown together in Budapest. And so we were meeting there. And, and that was exactly as, as, uh, as Jack has been in, you know, explaining. It's, it, it's a very interesting city to meet. Mm -hmm. The precariousness of the enterprise, the precariousness of us all meeting. And but I, I think humor did help us, you know, all get to know each other and, and sort of, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure Checky got to know my trays as much as I enjoyed his as things went on. And <laughs> that also breeds a kind of an ease and a humor and, uh, and uh, empathy. And uh, so it, it was a, it was a very unusual experience, I have to say. And of course, we, we had COVID coming in just, you know, six weeks into our mm -hmm. feud. So we also had this outside terror of appearing so you know our concentration was very was very taxed i can imagine so what so did you essentially have to like flee budapest in the middle of filming and then come back together to finish yeah. it off <laughs> so how was that from, then after from that one period? hour to the other oh wow how like that, yeah. that must have been a very strange period how easy then was it to slip back into the character of emma after that sort of time I, of weirdness? i felt much older <laughs> right only you can tell <laughs> <laughs> I thought, my God, <laughs> six months later, we've been much older, but you can't tell. <laughs> no, no, you definitely can't. We Jackie... did story very well, I think, by then. And maybe, maybe it was a good thing, Jack and Harry, I don't know. <laughs> um, Checky, there is such a huge fan base for Baptiste. Why do you think he is such a beloved hero? <laughs> I mean, when people it's, come up um, to you in the street, you know, what do they say to you? You know, him? I think uh, I think he's not a hero. The hero is the the, the choir. Uh, the hero is the the writer. The you know this um, ensemble. Mm -hmm. uh, that that that's why it has this um, this power. You know, it's a, it's like a an ensemble coming in. And, uh, and then the story of each one, you know, but uh, it's the full thing that's heroic. As a character, I feel like um, uh, Corife. Corife, you know the word, I always have difficulty to find the, in, it's, it, it's an English word too, uh, Fiona, I'm sure, uh, Corife, uh, Corife. Uh, you know, there is, a, there is the choir and there is one voice in the middle that, that, that huh? Yeah. The fellow who begins, you know, the Christmas the, <laughs> yes. Corifee. No, but it's a Corifee. It's a, in the Greek tragedy. In the Greek tragedy, you have the the, the theater, uh, the amphitheater, and you have the choir, and there is a Corifee. It, it's like uh, he's gathering the forces, and he's mm -hmm. uh, uh, like number ten in a in a in a football team. You know, he gives the ball sometimes, and he takes them. You know. <laughs> Is it clear as a metaphor? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find can a I metaphor. Just have to say, before I, I met Checky, you know, every woman I know is in love with Checky. <laughs> uh, because he's um, a grown up 
person. You know, I think that's really good for the screen that it's not, you know, it's not a young action hero. Mm -hmm. It's a person who has complexity. And I mean, people just adore him because they feel he replies to their complexity. Mm -hmm. That's a really lovely yeah, word. I'm, and I'm in a good shape. That's <laughs> why <laughs> so everyone's in love with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Harry, do you have certain notes that you need to hit when you're writing a drama series, like a cliffhanger at the end of every episode? How do you sort of structure these incredibly complex episodes? Uh, I mean, it takes a long time. And it's sort of, yeah, you've got to hit cliffhangers and you've got to it's got to be intriguing and the story has got to be emotionally engaging there's sort of all these elements that over the years we've hopefully managed to pick up and know that we have to address uh when we're doing a script and you can always tell if you're lacking in a certain area as you you redraft and re it's, it's sort of redrafting it and fundamentally if the story is an emotionally engaging one and you care about what happens to these characters then you're on pretty good solid ground mm -hmm. and you're gonna be okay um but it's, it's an evolving thing, as, as we said earlier, like when you're editing it, you're still seeing new things and you're going, oh, shit, we missed that bit there. Or we could maybe tweak that and put a bit more intrigue. That could be more intriguing. Do you know what I mean? It's a sort of you could fiddle with it forever, really. Um, uh, but you've got to film it at some point. Mm -hmm. That end, the one at the end of episode one is a doozy of a cliffhanger. And we have to wait until the summer to find out what happens, which is very cruel. That's nothing. <laughs> yeah, she's right. It gets, it gets crazier. <laughs> oh my God. How, I mean, now that people are sort of into these box sets and everything being on iPlayer and you can download everything all at the same time does that change the those notes that you have to hit if you're thinking people might be binging these and so they don't necessarily you don't need to have that same pull at the end well, I think it probably helps us a bit I think we've always written quite sort of complex shows that were fairly uncompromising in terms of having to know what's going on and track a bunch of different timelines and languages and places and I think if anything just it rewards that more doesn't it that you can take your time you don't have to stop every 15 minutes and explain yourself and mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you do <laughs> depending on what the bbc tells you to do um but but mostly mostly you can be you can be quite complicated and and bold and tell stories that are challenging and that and also that find an audience and don't have to try and appeal to a huge base you can just sort of go this is the story we want to tell and be very specific and brave about it but i mean no it doesn't really honestly hasn't really changed um what we do particularly mm. i think those things also work brilliantly when you watch them week by week and yeah. you, you're left waiting and hopefully the cliffhanger waiting till somewhere is a, is a good thing because sometimes just going like yeah you know i mean it's like if you get all the maltesers at once you sort of yeah. go, you stop tasting the maltesers you're like oh yeah. they're done now what else can i have but like <laughs> maybe you have to wait for i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> you're talking about maltesers yeah yeah i'm really hungry <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, um, there's there's a scene where Baptiste first comes to the hotel where the camera just very slowly rotates 360 degrees as he sort of takes everything in. Is that very reflective of his method? It's sort of slow, measured, but complete. Yeah, that, that one was, uh, you know, in the ensemble, we have two directors. There is Thomas uh, Napper and Hong Kau, uh, just to say their name. Um, uh, this one was, uh, uh, yeah. So, you know, the, I guess they want to exactly be the eye and show that he's, uh, he's scanning the place. And uh, uh, it's like he's, uh, they, they go inside uh, his brain. And uh, that was a great shot, it's true. Uh, like the one they did around the table when uh, suddenly we realize you, you stay alone. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the good ideas with the, the, the DP and the camera. Yeah, it, exactly. They, um, they were together with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's in, in, one, in one shot, suddenly he's, he's uh, taking the sense of what's happening. She's there. There is the family. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he starts to understand things happening. I don't go through it. Uh, with the family, the woman there the cultural attaché, the place, you know, and he's quiet. Yeah, he's a cerebral, to, uh, he's a cerebral yeah. detective and he's, what I like is you always get that sense he's ahead of us and we don't quite know how or why. So he's taking stuff in and we're like, what? 
what's he saying? What's that about? <laughs> but we know he's onto something. And you're like, well, tell me, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got to ask the obvious question, which is, is there going to be another series? Um, at this, no. No, hard no. No, no. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I tell you what, when we finished Babji series one, we had a sort of whole idea for a trilogy and it was all great and very exciting. And then we thought about it, what we didn't ever want to do was somehow him, him become another police officer. I think what we've managed, had the joy of doing every year is telling big, bold stories that give him a proper journey. He's not just a detective. He doesn't just come in and find out some stuff and go home. He goes through proper big arcs and every year we get these amazing actors we can't believe are lucky enough to come and join us to mm. tell amazing big stories too. And I think we began to worry that does it become a formula? Do we suddenly make him just another cop? And we thought, and we just thought, well, that aside, how do we just tell a great story for him and a great story for, you know, an actress that we've wanted to work with forever. And the things came together and as we wrote it we started to realize that if we did this uh we wouldn't get to do another one um and uh yeah it's not you know i we love this show we love chucky it's you know it's been working together a long time so it's um a yeah. decision. but it's about doing the right thing for the show and the character not going hey we'll be back next year with more crazy adventures you know yeah. keep watching till you don't like let's <laughs> do something great that we all love that we're proud of so Checky, how, yeah. what's the what's the hardest thing about saying goodbye to Baptiste then after what, maybe saying, eight years? No, I'm not saying goodbye. You know, I, 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 I <laughs> didn't say hi yet. <laughs> I didn't say hi yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, am I saying goodbye to myself? No, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying hi all the time, and uh, you know, I, I hope I'm not uh, stuck in Baptiste character. You know, I'm already uh, going through uh, other things. And I hope we will go through other things together, you know, and that uh, you don't see me uh, as uh, Julien Baptiste. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I can be a lot of things. I will be on a horse uh, next week. Uh, oh, I can't wait to see uh, that. In, in, the, in the army, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a musician. Uh, I can swim. <laughs> Are you writing your dating profile right now? What's happening? <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> have me at home. You know, I don't know. I can be a terrorist. I can be a whatever. It's taking a turn. I'm, I'm white. <laughs> I'm Caucasian. Um, what? <laughs> we've got uh, audience questions now. We've got quite a few in. So um, let's start with this one. Question for Harry and Jack. Um, thriller, crime, drama, mystery continues to be for generation. Oh, hold on. This is a complicated question. Um, for generations, screenwriters, creators, and directors, I guess thrillers, crime dramas, mysteries is one of the most inspiring and interesting elements in storytelling. So why is this aspect so attractive and unchanged in your opinion? Why is it so consistent? Why are people interested in thrillers and mysteries? I think so. Uh, if that's a correct interpretation of the question, I think it's kind of human nature. You hear like any mystery. If you pass someone, they go, oh, you know that went missing and my someone stole my Maltesers not that I'm you know returning to a theme or anything you're like oh what did happen to them I think it's very human to want to understand why things work and what where things have gone you know and they're enduring I think people are always obsessed with finding out the truth because it tells us it's a lot about who we are trying to get to the bottom of things and make the world intelligible and that's always been the case in all the stories anyone's ever told since we told stories to each other so I don't think that's going to change anytime soon um and harry anything to add no just exactly that yeah it's uh no. a big question he, he nailed it i mean <laughs> what more is there to say on the subject i feel like Jack i mean thank you thank you Harrier, for Andrea, sorry thank i guess you also question. if i if i if i may you know uh as i'm looking a lot at series uh on my ipad lately mm -hmm. you know uh, even though it's true it would be better to be on the big screen but uh, i feel uh, quite uh, surprised that it works very well when you are focused on on it and uh, you you are alone and it's uh, it's like talking to yourself uh, deep down it, there is something about uh, almost uh, being a peeping tom you know without realizing uh, and uh, uh, questioning yourself how would i face that thing uh, uh, is this guy crazy uh, do i identify with him 
there is something that we need. We need uh, the, uh, the, this uh, dialogue, this conversation with ourselves and others. How do we relate to others? I guess the mystery is there. The, the need of others, you know. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, thank you so much, Andrea, as well. I'm really sorry for butchering your question. That was my inability to read, sorry. Um, this is from Luby from France, who's got a question for Fiona. You have an impressive career. How do you choose your characters for a TV series? I, I don't choose my characters for a TV series. I think they choose me or you know, you get, you, you know, things come and you find the thing that is a match. Mm -hmm. um, I think what is, very unusual when you're talking about suspense. I, I would never have thought of myself as having anything to do with suspense, but this thing is so well written that suspense or mystery is maybe a heightened version of the slight confusion that we all have in life. And really what's so interesting about being part of something like this is really it's about the detail of life. And, and this thing explodes the detail because in the extremists, you discover who you really are. You know, both both your uh, vulnerabilities and your uh, you know your vanities and all of those things are exposed and really in that way I think anything that pushes you know both the actor but also the characters into knowledge is an interesting thing and a useful thing. Mm. Do you do the roles that you play kind of then spark off other scripts? You know, you were saying about how you get sent characters that are quite quirky for example do you then get a run of those sorts of characters and then because people have seen you do that or how does it work well I, I once played a mad school teacher in a in a film called three men and a little lady and I I, I had to I had to actually leave the profession I couldn't say <laughs> you know I just said no after that so I didn't do anything for many years I was not going to play another headmistress you have to you have to also run away sometimes that's fair enough although you were brilliant in that film um <laughs> jim, <laughs> jim um has got a question for checky in this second season do we find out more about baptiste's backstory is he harboring any dark secrets or skeletons in his closet um i think the 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 closet uh opens completely and uh, all the skeletons uh, run all together. <laughs> uh, yeah, as I said, he's really at the bottom of the barrel. Um, and uh, he's, he's yelling at the gods, you know, and uh, would say to anyone, uh, get out of my son. Um, so, um, yes, there is a, yeah, we, we, we learn about uh, the strength one can have in the uh, the worst situation, if you accept, uh, if you accept uh, how uh, wounded and weak, and weak you are, you, you you can be get really really strong and uh, rebuild yourself. Mm. Yeah, we learn a lot about him in that uh, in that series and about okay. about uh, uh, Emma. It's really uh, two uh, poor lonesome. Uh, Cowgirl and cowboy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lonson people, you know, Lonson people yeah. um, that uh, work together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Patrick has asked to all of you, how does it feel to have seen the Baptiste universe grow so much over the past eight years? Jack, let's start with you. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I mean, like anything, it's it's, a, it's always a surprise. You know, we didn't set out when we wrote The Missing. To I never thought we'd be here. We never thought we'd be writing that character again. And, you know, I think we've said before that we didn't, you know, Chucky said before he didn't want to do the part at first, um, you know, for, of, and we, we kept hounding him. Mm -hmm. Our director at the time kept hounding him till he agreed. And then the first day he showed up on set, her and I watched it and went, Oh man, he's really good. <laughs> and then some somehow during the first series we had an idea, and that became the, the second missing. And then somehow we had another idea for him. It's just sort of evolved and grown, and we've got to tell these great stories with him. And you know, this this episode six, if you're a fan of the character and you know the the show in general, is a very emotional one. It's for us, and every time we watch episode six, it's um 
quite an emotional experience. So it's it's surprising, and we've been really really lucky. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge emotional investment. It's eight years. You know, it's longer actually since we wrote the first draft of our first missing. So it's sort of living with this character in this world and this the the way of writing the show, which we've come to know so well and absolutely love. Like I don't love writing a show this much. You know, it's it's just it's a joy. Uh, and it's just having those ama these amazing actors like uh, in it and you get the rushes back and it's just, you know, uh, it's uh, very, very, it's a very big emotional investment, really care about the, the characters and the world uh, and all the, yeah, all the iterations of it, um, but very rewarding for it. Mm. Shecky, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what about you just kind of see see how it's grown so much from its conception from when you said no i grew up with him you know we grew up all together yeah and uh uh i had uh my daughter was uh, just born a few months before uh, i finally uh, realized that i was doing a mistake to uh, try to escape the offer Mm -hmm. And uh, when we started and uh, I realized uh, how uh, bright they were and uh, the team, the, the brothers, I loved to say the brothers, you know, Jack and Harry, the brothers, <laughs> you know, it's really, uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Also, it was the first time they were writing. I, I realized uh, something together. Was it right? And uh, and then I said, uh, after four or five months, I said, uh, you know what, I'm ready to go 10 years with you. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know, you know, because I didn't want to be hooked for so long, uh, uh, six months and then uh, signed for three years. I, I felt weird and the story, and suddenly I realized it's a big mistake not to uh, dare going uh, uh, through that uh, adventure. And uh, I was, you know, I also the, the English audience, I felt like they took me with their arms, you know, and they took the, the show with their arms. It's a big hug that I always want uh, to, to give back, you know, and uh, meet, uh, I say again, you know, Fiona, uh, the actors that we went through, you know, it's, uh, I mean, and, and uh, the climax is the Fiona show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the the pick of it <laughs> has uh, for you Fiona has kind of you know I'm, I'm obviously the you know I'm the new girl in the, yeah. the school but I, I it has been great working um you know Jack and Harry would be sending these notes and changing things but with Checky he always had a sort of philosophical interest in every scene and I think it's what he's just said that after all these years of playing Julian Baptiste he, it's become a dialogue. I don't know, Techie, am I saying that? But you, you, he's always talking about, I remember once you talked about trying to play a scene completely freely, freely of free of everything you knew. And I think the character has done that, begun to let bits of himself go. So, so that both Checky and the character and therefore the scene and therefore the series are all discovering new things at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very exciting to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. We've we've got one last question, which is a bit more. Of, it's a bit of a fun one. If you're a Line of Duty fan, the two most popular TV cops at the moment are Baptiste and Ted Hastings. Oh. Who would win in a fight between the two? Good one, Helen. <laughs> well, look. I mean, Julian has had his legs smashed. He's had a brain tumor. He's had serious family tragedy, but he doesn't give up. Like Matt, he no, can get up. up. Yeah. Hastings is a, is a death job, man. Um, with respect. Yeah. They'd fight, but then they'd have a beer afterwards and they'd be. I would think of that. They'd have an ale, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be fine afterwards, but only after <laughs> Baptiste wore him down with, like, he'd get him in a headlock and just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Having seen you fighting with two police officers in episode one, I can absolutely believe that. Yeah. Yeah, he can take them. <laughs> Um, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Checky, Harry, Jack, Fiona, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to all of you. Thank you so much for watching at home and for all of your brilliant questions. Uh, just a reminder again, not to share any content or images um, until the 13th of July and Baptiste series two is going to be out in the summer. So we can all find out what happens at the end of that phenomenal cliffhanger. Um, 
I hope you all are going to have a lovely rest of your evening and thank you again. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank, thank you. Thank you.